this video is quite dark and deals with some pretty grim factors in life. If you decide to continue watching this and feel you need some cheering up afterwards, I strongly recommend watching something like Black Books, which is available on Netflix. Hey guys, it's Lexi. Grief is a very hard emotion to deal with. I've had to deal with my fair share of loss in my time. And each one has been painful in its own way. I'm sorry if I seem a bit down on this one, it's just this is not an easy subject. So I've got a full face of makeup going here just so I don't ruin it by crying. When I was 15, I made a friend online whose name was Chris. We hit it off with great friends. He was intelligent and funny and kind, but also a bit clingy and weird. I didn't think too much of it. As I spoke to him more, the more I understood about him. He came from a rough background. He didn't really have any friends. And as far as it went, I was the only girl to ever actually talk to him. We were close. I saw him as nothing more than a friend. He saw me as more than a friend and wanted more from me. Now this wouldn't have been possible even if I did reciprocate feelings here because he lived overseas. I told him straight up. As much as I cared about him, I didn't see him beyond being a friend. And the sheer distance between where we lived wouldn't have made it a possibility. A few months later, whilst talking to him, he dropped some pretty bad news on me. He had finally gotten the money together to go see a doctor. Al was diagnosed with terminal cancer. He didn't go into details about it. He didn't really want to talk about it. He asked me to distract him. So we talked about music and books. And what we thought of the stupid things that celebrities were doing at the time. He only had about three months to live by this point. He started talking more about what was wrong. Again, he didn't go into details with what it was. He would tell me about how his parents didn't believe him. He would tell me about how it was hard for him to concentrate and things would get fuzzy. And then he started talking to me about his depression. Coming from a hard background, he just didn't have it in him to carry on. So, I mean, I tried to tell him it wasn't a good idea, but I couldn't have told him anything else anyway. When someone is dying and they don't have a saving grace for them, like there is nothing left. And they can see where their end date is. And it's approaching fast, there's nothing you can say or do to convince them. And I don't know. I just felt I couldn't tell him that he shouldn't. I asked him not to. But his only response to me was what did I want him to do? To carry on? 
and die a long and painful, drawn out death. Or for him to be able to finish it in an instant. I told him I'd miss him. I couldn't find an argument to make him hold on and there was nothing I could have said or done. No matter how hard I tried. He went quiet one day and then I didn't see him online for months. And then one day on MSN Messenger, which is what I was using at the time, he popped up. I was astounded because this was past the three months he had left. And I was so hopeful that maybe some kind of miracle had broken through and that he was going to be alive and okay. But he wasn't. It was one of his, well, it was his only other friend. They had been left with his login details so they could deactivate his MySpace account. And so they could let the few people online know what had happened. I won't go into details about how he ended things because I feel it would be disrespectful to make a spectacle of what happened. I carried guilt for this with such a heavy heart, knowing full well nothing could have changed it. One of the things with grief, even if you know nothing could have changed it, is wondering if you could have done something different to make things better. Maybe if you'd gone to see them, or If maybe you could have said what they wanted to hear. To give them that last bit of happiness so that way it would have been something for them to carry on. I'm sorry. Sorry about that. <laughs> that painful piece of grief will haunt you. And it haunted me for such a long time. About a year later, I was still dealing with that grief. I had found an unhealthy crux to use to get me through it. And I'd finally stopped what I was doing. And every ounce of pain that I had been hiding with this came crashing back down. And I was again washed with that guilt of what if maybe I just told him I felt the same way. Maybe that would have made him feel better. What if I'd found a way, 15 year old me, finding a way to travel overseas to go visit him to make him feel better. The thoughts that surround it became extremely irrational. Around this time, I more or less was having a crisis. I couldn't cope with it. 
it had hit me a lot harder than I'd expected it to. I mean, people have always said it, internet friends are not real friends. Real friends are people you've at least seen in real life, at least once. But I saw him as a real friend. He was a very kind person. And part of the grief process that I thought would never come finally did. One night, whilst trying to deal with all of this, I dreamed I saw him. It was a very weird dream, to say the least. In this, I was in like a square. So there was buildings, a fountain, and everything was brick. And I was aware I was in this place and I'd never seen it before and I was aware I'd never seen it before. And I was trying to figure out what was going on. It's a really weird feeling to know that you're dreaming and not be sure of why. So I was looking around trying to figure out what was happening when I saw him. Chris approached me in this dream and it sounds crazy but he just hugged me and it was the most warm embrace I can ever remember feeling which is even weirder when you consider the fact it's a dream. And he told me not to feel guilty or feel shame over it because it wasn't my fault. And that he loved me for the fact that I tried. And to just let it go. He took a step back and told me that he had to go. And he walked off into this crowd of people and just disappeared. I woke up the next day feeling like a ton of weight had been lifted from my shoulders. I didn't feel guilty. I didn't feel shame. I didn't have the whole why couldn't I have just gone to see him to make him feel better? Why couldn't I have just pretended to feel the same way to make him feel better? It all kind of just clicked over and everything started to feel better and I was able to carry on with my life. So please, With your grieving process, don't feel bad for any of it. Don't feel like you're crazy. Everyone experiences grief differently. If you're worried that you're sick and that it might be something worth worrying about, go to a doctor. It's better to spend the money and find out what is wrong than it is to leave it and find out it is too late. If you are feeling suicidal, please, please seek help. There are so many people that care about you and love you. There is always someone out there willing to listen to you. 
even if you just call the suicide hotline, there is bound to be a crisis care that has a line for you in your area. I'm sorry this story time has been a bit depressing, <laughs> to say the least. But I love you all. Please stay safe. And as always, I'll see you next time.